All right, so my computer seems to be keeping up with me a little bit better now. Now, a lot of what I'm doing is just what's called texturing, just adding black line work that defines, you know, the feet being a different texture than the feathers, being a different texture than the tail, being a different texture than the wing or the beak or the eye. But notice that I've got a pretty clean outline a contour around it that's mostly contained. I'm sure there's probably gaps somewhere in just the way I've been working. And ultimately, when I color, I just need to know what the general silhouette shape is. So this is a type of technique that could take, you know, another hour to finish. But I want to be able to show you coloring. So what I'm going to do is show you how to set up, once you have your line work, at least the major shapes of your line work, because I can go back and revise. I'm going to show you how to set up the coloring within Photoshop. So first of all, you need to save your files in a way that makes sense. And we want to transport them to Photoshop, so we need them as EPS files. So obviously, I still have some more color, some inking to do. But if I were to do this, I think I would do them one at a time, even if I ended up arranging them like this. So even though this is all one Illustrator file that I've saved, I can turn off certain groups. And if I save them as an EPS with those groups turned off, then they won't be in the EPS. So for instance, let's save the bunny, right? So I'm going to say file, save as, and I'm going to go to the desktop, Carl Night Hair Line Work for Assignment 7, and I'm just going to call it Hair Line Work. And I'm not going to save it as an AI file, I'm going to, going to save it as an EPS file, just like we did for our logos. I'm going to keep all the defaults. And then I'm going to do the same thing with just the bird layer, which is why I consolidated all of those different texture layers I was working on. I'm going to do File, Save As, and this will be the Nighthawk to the desktop. I need a different name because obviously I don't want to just overwrite the file I just saved. So I have one that's the bird, one that's the hair. And that allows me to show you some different treatments. So then I'm going to Save Illustrator one more time and go ahead and minimize it because now we're headed to Photoshop. And if it says clipping path reach, that's because I have so many different vectors, it's just not going to be able to preview it very easily. I just made vectors, let me see, get info, that are quite big, right? So this is 20 megabytes, which is big for a vector file. That's because of all those little individual marks. I'm going to make sure that my weird, that my rabbit just has my rabbit in it, and my Nighthawk, there we go, just has my night, Nighthawk in it. Okay, now that I have those EPS files, I'm going to go back to Photoshop. And the last time I worked with Photoshop for this was just working on my sketch a little bit. I'm going to quit Illustrator so Photoshop runs a little faster. And while I'm doing that, I can look for some color inspiration. So I was thinking it might be fun to color one of them blue, one of them red, and kind of play with those primaries. So I found a bunch of inspiration images. I'm going for more of a, a handmade kind of uh, graphic image. So I looked up letterpress really like this one. 
So what can I do? Well, I can put them into my folder as color references. So here's my assignment seven folder. I'm gonna make a new folder, color inspirations. Open that up, then drag and drop some of that in there. I don't need these to be large, high resolution files at all. I kind of like that blue and that red and where they overlap getting that kind of mixed black. I like the, the duotone of the blue there. I don't know why that came in as a web block. So let's save image as JPEG image to the desktop. There it is, move that in. Some vintage packaging, always fun. Huh, yeah, it just doesn't like that one. Well, that's fine. Here's one that introduces a little bit of yellow just for the trees. And this one has a lot of yellow, just using the primaries. This is an old comic. It's a yellow kid showing the, uh, the use of the halftone dots that I'll be showing you a little later. This is a modern, modern, modern letterpress poster designer. How flat coloring can work with clear vector line work. And then some text usage we'll be talking about later. This is the kind of stuff that inspires me. It's colorful stuff. typeface ideas, on and on and on. So lots of color inspiration. Don't skimp on the color inspiration. You'll never know what's useful. Okay, so once you have that, now Photoshop is ready to go. I'm gonna open Photoshop and I'm gonna say File New. So I have to create the space because I need my EPS to stay as a smart layer. I'm going to make it in inches, 16 inches wide by 20 inches tall, poster size, 350 pixels per inch, white background. This is bigger than we've worked before. Then I'm going to drag and drop my vector in. So I have my bunny, drag and drop him in, and then hold down shift and option to lock the proportions and just kind of put them in. Not too small. We're working at such a high resolution because we're going to be adding color. And because we're doing it digitally, we want to have a lot of options. All right, so that feels nice. So now I've got these two smart layers that I cannot directly, and I got my little signature in there. Ooh, right at the middle. Very nice. Um, I can't directly edit them. If I try to color them, it tells me it's a smart object. It has to be rasterized. I don't want to rasterize it. So instead, I'm going to build layers underneath. So I make a new layer. I drag it underneath the hair. I'm going to call this the bunny flat color layer. And let's just start with that. Now I'm going to bring my inspiration in. How can I bring an in inspiration? So I'm thinking I want my bunny to be the red, the red and yellows, right? So I'm going to open this one up with Photoshop. You have to open up your inspiration images with Photoshop because we're going to be stealing colors directly from them. And we want to be able to see both at once. So then once we have them both open in Photoshop, in fact, I'm going to open up one other, really like this one. So now I have three, two color inspirations and my file open. I'm going to go to my original. I'm going to go to window, arrange, and I'm going to say three upstacked. So this will put them all in the window together for me. I'm going to shrink the border here. So I mostly see my artwork, but these are just like little color palettes for me. And then I can shrink them in so I can steal color easily or I can 
zoom into them. Again, it doesn't matter the resolution, just so I can see their color. All right, now because they're open in Photoshop, I can use the eyedropper tool, which is right here, to steal their colors directly. You can see it will show on my little color wheel here what these colors are. So for my bunny flat color, I want to paint with a red, but even these inspirations have different reds. Look at how it kind of jitters around. So I'm going to look for a light kind of pinkish red. And then I'm just going to use the paint bucket on my bunny flat color layer and drop it in. The problem is it's going to fill the whole layer. So first I have to contain my selection for it. If I go to my vector line work and I use the magic wand, even though the layer is a smart layer, and even if I lock it, which is a good idea to lock them both, um, I can still, with contiguous turned on, select inside my bunny and then move that selection to a new layer, just like we did with compositing and with our clouds and with the cookie cutters and all that. Now I can drop in that color within that selection. And what's nice about that is I can even have it with just the color layer. And you can see my line work is all perfectly selected around it at a high resolution. So that is flat color. Now, what if I don't like that color for the bunny? <laughs> I can change it. I can go to the eyedropper tool and I, uh, the shortcut for that is option. And I can find a different red, maybe a red with more yellow in it, right? And I can try dropping that in instead, or maybe a lighter version. Drop that in instead, right? But the problem is with digital color, if it's all exactly the same thing, I kind of like that one, it's all gonna feel kind of overwhelming and flat. So this is just the first step. Now let's do the exact same thing with the Nighthawk. We learn through repetition. I'm gonna build a Nighthawk flat color layer. Move it underneath my vector smart object. I'm going to select with contiguous inside my Nighthawk. And even though I have so much inking on that vector, notice how it still goes right to the edge because the only Actually, it spilled outside of the edge. Damn, I was hoping it wouldn't do that. Yeah, I have some openings there. All right, so I'm gonna show you how, how we can kind of work with that. But now I'm gonna to move to my Nighthawk flat color layer. I'm gonna hold down Option, steal the blue. So get to a paint tool like the paint bucket. Hold down Option, steal the blue. Uh, go back to this and then just drop that in, right? Now, because it's spilled to the outside, if I deselect, you will see. But what does that mean? Well, what it means is that I have openings in here where it got in, but if I turn this off, I can find those openings a little bit easier. So now with an eraser, just on my flat color layer with a pressure sensitive brush, I can see that the opening was right here and I'm gonna close it up. See that the opening was right here, I'm gonna close it up. So I'm not changing my vector. Instead, I'm sealing up these edges with my color layer, a little opening there, close it up. All right, so now I can select with contiguous all the blue. Ah, I still have openings, darn. Where are they? You gotta make it watertight. Oh, so it's treating this as an opening. Even though there's really thin white, it's not strong enough for the uh, sensitivity I have on the magic wand. So I can also just make my magic wand 